Alright guys, so I have a few replays to cast. Uh, the first one that I have here is one featuring the new 1814 cores that came along with the 9.4 update. Um, this is going to be fought on one of the new historical ba battle maps, uh, and I will try to not butcher the name as an American. It's the uh, R.C. Soroba map. Um, it's Napoleon's, I think, second to last battle he fought in 1814, historically. Um, something along those lines. Anyways, the uh, the cores that we have, or sorry, the teams that we have, are the Napoleonics playing the Imperial, and the LK clan playing the Coalition. Um, for the Imperial side, it's Mortier, the Old Guard. Um, the Guard was known for its heavy usage in the 1814 campaign. Uh, he's got the Ledoux combat gen, um, some of the Grognards, looks like the full Old Guard division, some of the filler, and then Mortier le leading. Napoleon's actually an, an option for this core as well. Um, Ney's core here with the Young Guard, and some of the Old Guard's cav detachments. Uh, and then some nice Young Guard guns. For the most part, the Young Guard is the sort of guard in name only. Um, they have nice fancy uniforms, as you can see, but generally their stats are not great. But they do got the uniforms. And then there is McDonald. Uh, he's one of the new Nine Pointers. Uh, hopefully my game does not crash when I zoom in on that. Um, he's got very affordable cav, uh, lots of provisional dragoons and things like that. His infantry is also quite affordable, um, which makes him an interesting nine pointer. You can really play as like a cav support army. And then uh, Maison, which is also young guard, uh, more young guard spam. Again, sort of similar idea as Ney, really like just okay-ish stats. They were a lot of the young guard units as part of like the you know raising a new army in 1814 the best conscripts went to the the young guard um and then you know given guard status as like a morale boost uh and then he's got the red lancers as well um so their stats reflect the fact that they are really like guard in name only and mostly just early picked conscripts uh, I haven't played this map much yet, uh, mostly because it's we've had all the issues with CA and getting the workarounds, but luckily uh, people in the community kind of banded together, Lords helped make a patch really fast, and we found enough workarounds that we do not have to touch grass and can actually play the mod uh, in multiplayer successfully. Um, on the Coalition side, they have Wellington here. Uh, this is Barclay de Tolle, the 11-pointer. This is an insanely scary army, lots of options, cost-effective grenadiers, cost-effective infantry, dragoons, everything that you could ever want, uh, and he's quite quick with lots of stars. Um, this is the Bavarian Corps, I don't remember who the commander is off the top of my head, and then the Prussian Corps, I think is Blucher's Corps, but I could be wrong. Um, I'll put it in the comments, usually I write these things down before I start the recording, but kind of in a rush on this one. Uh, overall, you have the French mostly <clears throat> centralized. Uh, you have a quite a wide option to deploy here. Um, this army could deploy on the road and reinforce this left, and you could maybe like smack these two armies if that was something you wanted to choose to do, but your reinforcing armies would be very slow since they have to cross this bridge and move through the through the uh, the forests here, even though there are roads, these kind of roads are kind of difficult to navigate. Um, I think there's another crossing, maybe over here, maybe not. I think this might actually be the only crossing. So there's like low lands in here that you can also use, but overall difficult. Um, the other option is you can maybe pivot to attack this flank. So you have like a very, you know, Napoleon's uh, six day campaign where he. <laughs> ping pong back and forth between Blucher's army and really beat up each core in detail. You can kind of do something like that here maybe where you have speed of road networks, uh, internal lines to move back and forth between each side. 
Um, coalition spawns quite wide and have to decide where they want to combine. Uh, we have a light cab running down the road to scout. Um, the coalition probably want to know if this player is going to make a front, and if he's not, then they need to scout it really early so they can decide to, you know, either recombine this way or recombine towards here or maybe in the center. Uh, this sort of early scouting knowledge, Mortier doesn't really get, well he has guard, light cav, but it's very expensive and at that point you don't really have infantry and I feel like Mortier right now at least, um, you know, you need kind of some sort of infantry force for him to be effective at least. Uh, it does look like Imperial are gonna filter this way. You can tell by their move orders here. Um, and it looks like these two armies are probably coming in this direction. More like have Kosaki running. They're probably trying to scout this forest side, maybe see if Morte was over here instead of over here, but these this light cap from the UK probably already scouted all of this. Uh, the Dragoons are moving across first. And they moving all the way to the right flank. Overall, the new 1814 cores are really interesting. Um, there's been some balancing issues, but I think a lot of them have been addressed. Uh, it's not like Napoleon's army in 1814 was superior to the coalition, and it's not like there haven't been other cores that have had, you know, their own balancing tweaks needed. But Lutz ran out a patch basically right after 9.3 and after the CA stuff that addressed some of the issues with 1814's pricing. and. Mortier was probably one of the ones that needed to be buffed a little bit, um, and he was in, in the price changes. Lots of Bavarian like have. I'm still not that familiar with the course, so I can't provide a lot of info. I've only played them maybe twice now, um, but they're definitely interesting. Uh, I think uh, Imperial still has a slight speed advantage. They have lots of cavalry, but it's actually worse than the, the Coalition's cavalry. Um, in terms of stars, usually you have to rely on Napoleon to bring your stars up, but each of the core commanders isn't terrible, uh, but they're not they're not better than the the um, their coalition counterparts for this campaign in general. See a lot of Prussian cav gaining this high ground probably for either their infantry or guns. Servants in a forest, unscouted, is kind of scary. And the Muscadine. So in theory, I think Coalition have Cav superiority right now, but somehow aren't gaining uh, like map control really out of it. Or at least not reacting. Like, all of this infantry is still hidden, which isn't necessarily a problem, but they don't. I don't feel like they really know where everyone is. And in a map where Coalition spawns on exterior lines of communication and they need to recombine, you really need to know where you need to recombine. Like, if this flank or this flank needs to pull back or something along those lines. Now they're getting aggressive with their scouting. Same here as well. They probably thought about getting these guns. They're gonna pay for it. This is why it's good to have units that can shoot from your point. Uh, they peeled off 
10 models off of the Sibons and almost routed them by shooting them in the flank. Um, Ledu, <coughs> sorry, captured some Cossacks back here. Looks like the Lancers will probably finish them. These guns are in like prime position to rip through this cab, but I don't think they actually hit anything. I don't see any models killed from the artillery. I think it might have actually overshot the hill. Have some Bavarian troops try to sneak in to get this one pointer over here on the flank. LK really likes to play for lock, so. Which is a good thing. They're always trying to pressure the lines of communication. If you own all the lines of communication, then. You know, you can make the enemy make attacks to try to win the game. Because at some point, you'll have to attack in order to uh, get back. They did scout it though, so it looks like some cab is being moved over there. McDonald's arrived here now, and it looks like May is shifting more centrally again with some units in the tree line here. The Cervantes probably should be a little bit more forward so that <coughs> sorry, Imperial can get some scouting in. And this side is like completely blind for the Imperial forces, but I don't think they care because they're they know that there's an army here and they have concentrated all of their forces here. So they can more or less ignore this side at this point and just know that Detali and Wellington are still quite far away from being able to support this Bavarian army that's exposed now on the flank. There is quite a bit of British cab here. Probably trying to counter battery these guns. Yeah, you can see the dead models there. Lots of Prussian artillery getting set up. And from this position, they have, they can pretty much command these heights with this many guns, support their infantry moving up and things along those lines. The French did intercept the Bavarian troops and routed them, looks like they had no squares over there. The Bavarian light cab I think is probably somewhere here, based on the scouting. This whole Young Guard division, like in the trees, would be pretty scary. Especially if it remains unscouted. Lots more cab shifting. Huge cab reserves, basically. And we do know that there's more cab over here. Maison arriving now on this flank. Finally, some of the Tali's infantry showing up. There is a British light cab here. And Maison is right here, so that's kind of a. And Maison's light cab is all the way up here. It's well disguised, you can't really see it there. Uh, the Prussians are advancing. They have really deep reserves. Looks like they might have gotten All men are running. I don't know if that's really worth it, but it could have been. Still lots of cav, French cav on the on this side. So it does look like actually the 
the Bavarian cap is here centrally. And Prussia is showing an open flank to Maison arriving. Natali completely here. It does look like that cap got in. Killed Maison. That's unfortunate for him because Maison really does. Even though he's like, I think only two stars, he kind of needed with the young guard. I'm not sure what Prussia's plan was here with his advance, other than losing models. Um, maybe they were trying to push forward while Detali is coming this direction, so they need to pin whatever's in front. But this is a pretty scary push from the French. Ney fully committed here. The old guard is still completely in reserve, so they have Ney and McDonald pushing the Bavarian player. Natalia is still completely on the flank. It's a bit of a no-no. He pulls away though before the charge is completed, but when you're targeting, make sure that you don't target units behind other units. It's pretty impressive how much reserves and things like that the uh, Prussians can have with this much cab and Our men are guns running and things for... like that. Like they have this whole battalion, this battalion, this whole battalion. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. So the French have caught the Bavarian army here. These Prussians aren't doing their friends any favors. The rest of the young guard is moving up with the old guard. Forcing squares, getting into melee with the young guard, probably the best option that you have. They don't shoot particularly great. Lots of squares on this force, so young guard ran or the Servants can't do much there. I think this unit, you can see it doesn't have any attack orders. I think that's the one that reformed. Yeah, it's tired. So it had attacked before and then it ran again. You always have to make sure that when your units are coming back to try and give them new orders, that we don't lose them again. Bavaria's micro scr stretched and he just got his light gap sniped over here. Though this is some very scary. Especially a light cab. Oh, man, a light cab kind of thing, I think these are heavies. I'm not really great with British cab uniforms, but those look like heavies to me. Uh, Detali is entering the town here. So we have Detali's counterattack on this flank against Maison, which he should just cut through Maison now without a general and Detali's uh, grenadiers while the main French attack is here. So you have a two, yeah, two v three more or less here. Ladu going in. This actually is probably hurting the Prussians more than helping them. <coughs> Servants charging. He probably could have gone a little bit wider with that. Probably should also not change targets, but it's not a big deal at this point. It's probably starting. There's a non-zero chance that this unit, even though it was already in contact, would just turn and fit him, so it's understandable. Uh, Detali trying to get this house from Maison and losing. Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack! 
looks like at least. This would be a very scary thing to see on the flank. Maison just has to buy his time though, because this center is ruptured. Ledoux is tired, but you know, he's routed the entire center of the, the Prussian line. The Bavarians are gonna die. The entire line is broken here. Grog's even going in for melee. The debuffs of having all of your friends routing is just going to keep stacking. We have killed their general, sir. Here. Now they must break. Looks like a gen might have gotten run over by friendly cav. These dragoons need to help with the pursuit. Just go all in. Detali still hasn't taken this house. He has massive reserves. I don't know where Detali himself is. I think he's right here. Probably needs to be a little bit closer to give his stars to help inspire this. But the more you send in and the more they lose, like the more likely it is that you aren't going to take the house because you're just going to keep getting debuffs from friends routing and stuff like that. Uh, like have going in to try and support, but I think that's also too late. Go back to the pursuit over here. Ladu has one handedly. Old guard is hitting the middle. Unlucky that the grogs got were chasing a unit, and it looks like they got shot frontally as they were chasing. Sorry, sir. Our men are running, sir. He did a job. He got in and helped with the uh, exposed flank there. Now Detali is here with another section, and he could really do some damage if he counterattacks with this. Especially with all this cabin support. I don't know how you have this much cav, but don't don't support as well. Looks like they're pulling away from the town. Maison did a really good job of defending here, even without a gem. Uh, more Prussians getting routed here. This cab will probably beat this handedly, but more cab on the flanks. These guys just need to keep moving forward, keep the chain route going, don't let them breathe. It's a really well executed move by the, the French. They completely pulled over this way and then combined all three of their main armies over here while leaving a small rear guard that didn't necessarily intend to be a rear guard because I think he was steaming down this road and then he would have hit the flank of the uh, the Prussians here. But they managed to, you know, despite having a light cab inferiority and scouting inferiority in general, they were able to combine over here and just hit the uh, Bavarians who, for whatever reason, were not prepared for like such a massive attack. Um, Detali's counterattack here against Ney's young guard will probably route his front lines, but he has all this in reserve, so if you can tire him out and then just wait and start shooting him, like these units here, probably could shoot into the flanks and really do damage. Same with like this right here. This cab is just coming in to pick off like one or two units and getting annihilated instead. This is a bit blobby here, I think. Some of the pathfinding issues maybe, but like it's definitely a little bloody. Okay, I think that's a Russian unit inside a Prussian unit. And like I said, Natali still hits really hard. Uh, 
It's just they split Detali into three sections instead of just using him to counterattack one place, and he got hard checked by Maison over here, but not enough. He's over here wrecking Ney's front line with that calf support. But I don't think it's enough manpower total to to keep a uh, to fully break Ney. Meanwhile, this flank is just getting annihilated by the uh, McDonald Cav Corps. <clears throat> I think Maison is caught out here. It was good work by that light cav. Looks like they can smell the blood over here, and they're moving all of their light cab over to try and pursue Maison. Some idle units. Yeah, Maison is dead. And that's just part of Detali, you know, like he. If you had concentrated Detali in one section or another, maybe bought more time, like, what's left of the Prussians is buying quite a bit of time. Just their sheer numbers, you know. Maison, completely surrounded by Cav now. started firing before contact. I don't know if I would call that one fail. So that's Maison dead, uh, for sure. But they pulled all their cavalry from this flank, and now McDonald has free reign to run down what's left of the Prussians there. They have more or less a fresh old guard to counter a slightly beat up Detali. Uh, he spent a, quite a bit in the center trying to kill Ney, and Ney's still alive. They used some bits to kill Maison. And a lot of these units look like they're probably under half strength. They're small to begin with, so it's kind of hard to tell, but they have taken quite a few losses. And the UK, I think, is a cav corps, so they've been stretched on both sides. Like, they've been fighting cav over here and cav over here. It's quite difficult with light cav corps to be a, a little bit of everywhere at once, especially when you're getting chain routed on one side, but also trying to uh, pressure and attack on the other. So what's left of the, the coalition army is actually trying to centralize here, pull back towards the town might try to do something where they defend the town uh, and leverage Detali's like excellent melee in, in small areas like this that the co or sorry the Imperial will just throw away their their manpower but this is a lot to overcome even with Detali more units getting caught out and they're getting shot in the back by the Prussians there Overall, yeah, uh, pretty interesting battle. Uh, <clears throat> in general, people have been saying that 1814 cores are really coalitionally biased, um, and there's definitely merit to some of that. Like Detali does hit 
really, really hard. This building has fallen to the enemy. Attacked Ne, maybe they could have flipped the game on its head, uh, especially supported by the Wellington Cav Corps. Um, you saw how much damage they did, even in a limited front. Maybe if all of Detali had shown up and counterattacked along that same axis, uh, you'd have had 11 points smashing into them there. But they did tie up Maison with, you know, a brigade down here. Um, but Imperial outplayed them this time. It's it was a nice uh, recombining of armies, local superiority, uh, using somewhat of the Imperial speed. I know they're mostly L4, but that's still probably on average faster than the Prussians and the Bavarians. I think they're mostly L3 with some L4 elements. So when the Prussians and Bavarians committed to this line, that's more or less when they were doomed. And that was a lot due to lack of scouting. I think if the coalition had used their cav advantage a little bit better, and we saw how much better their cav was, um, the fact that they have all of this cav still alive, if you have cav core that's like significantly still alive at the end, but all of your infantry has been routed, then there's an issue with uh, how much your cav core did, or how much your cav did in general. Um, It has to be, like, either very aggressively played, or you just don't bring your Cav Corps. They didn't gain any sort of map control with the Cav Corps. The Imperial walked with complete impunity to recombine on the Bavarian flank, and used these forests to, to mask a lot of their intentions. Um, despite seeing the Old Guard walking down the road, they didn't pull back their right. Uh, so that led to what eventually became uh, a disaster here. I think Victor and, sorry, not Victor, McDonald and Ney by themselves probably could have rolled that flank, but the guard, you know, tying up even more and stretching Micro along here, either the Prussians or the Bavarians, and his charge with Ledoux basically shattered the center at the same time that Ney was attacking forward, and you get the entire frontage broken. Um, it was very much 1814-esque. The pursuit lacked Cav, more or less, to, to run him down and have the decisive win probably like 15 minutes ago. Um, and the Imperial were able to like wedge themselves between two cores and do like the sort of beat an area locally with as much as you could and then turn and beat another area locally. Like, the Prussians had numerical advantage, for sure, but they had, uh, you know, they weren't able to actually use their numerical advantage because they were getting 2v3'd over there with <coughs> all of the French. Um, Maison put up an excellent rear guard here in the town against an army that's generally... <coughs> My God. My God. ...generally seen as a, a melee king, so... Maison holding the house initially and holding this, this sort of rear guard really stumped up the uh, the counterattack by uh, Detali on this flank. And then they bled into the center with Detali around here against Ne, um, and that ultimately just didn't work out for them. So it is possible to win with 1814 uh, Imperial if you kind of just combine, have good scouting. Um, I mean, in this case, the Imperial didn't even care about scouting as much. They just had an idea of how they wanted to combine, and the Coalition fed into it. Uh, so, well played by N. Um, personally, I thought it was a, an interesting replay, even though it turns out to be somewhat of a stomp. Um, Detali had chances to counterattack, and we saw Maison get completely chain routed. Uh, a lot of his units came back, thanks to the guards and spires helping them. But, you know, even in the center, when he attacked Ne, uh, Ne was close to shattering there as well. We have killed their general, sir! Now they um, must break! Yeah, thanks for watching. I will probably fast forward it because there's not much left to do. They're gonna just mop up 
the handful of units. Uh, N and LK played the same map, but in reverse as well before this. So um, N was playing the Coalition 1814 cores, and LK played Imperial uh, 1814 cores. So I'll, I will try to cast that one. Probably won't be today. Probably will be next week because I'll be gone for a few days. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it's been a little bit for me since I've done any casting, so a little rusty. But uh, yeah. Oh, don't know what happened there. do farming. I'm just kidding. Just throw an inspire on that. Kill all of this cow. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Sorry, just trying to get to the end now, but uh, as you can see, the actual replays still work in 9.4. Um, I know there was some concern about that, but it does actually seem to work with the beta revert. So as far as I know, this played out exactly like it did in the real one. I've watched this replay twice now, maybe three times, and it the units that routed all routed the same. So as far as I can tell, it's all still good to go. Uh, this one was... I think, yeah, McDonald's core. You can see the Dragoons put in a lot of work. And same with that line here. Light Infantry also doing well. Um, I will try to link the end screen in the comments, uh, but we shall see. Thanks again for watching.